So hello, I am Scott Steen of the American Physiological Society. I'm here today with Dr. Ron Lynch, former APS counselor, professor of physiology, and acting department chair at the University of Arizona. Our conversation today will be excerpted in the evolution column of the Physiologist magazine. The purpose of this column is to focus on significant issues affecting our community and also the people who are making a difference within the discipline. Today, we'll be talking about how physiology has evolved as a discipline within large research institutions like Arizona, and also what the future might be for physiology at these types of institutions. So Ron, and great to see you, and let's get started. I think Arizona must be one of the largest physiology programs in the country. Can you talk a little bit about what brought you to Arizona in the first place and how the program has evolved during your time there? Well, I came to Arizona very specifically because of their uh, deep expertise in, in imaging, um, particularly optical imaging. Um, and I think one of the advantages of a large university like this state university is the ability to access a lot of the basic science uh, faculty in their research. And that was one of the key things that brought me here. And, and as part of my uh, letter um, of offer, it was that I was to interface between the main campus imaging community and bring some of that technology to the, to the cancer center, uh, which I'm part of, and also the medical school. So just really the... Um... The breadth of resources was um, absolutely that the university it's very offered. attractive to me as a young scientist yeah. to have that level of collaboration. Um, and the medical school is uh, immediately adjacent to the undergraduate campus, so it was a major advantage. So, what, what was the um, what was physiology as a di as a department a discipline like when you first um, arrived at U of A? Yeah, I mean, uh, it was a focused department in some respects, a lot of cardiovascular research, and then a couple other people that had their areas of research in areas that needed to be taught within the curriculum. Uh, within the physiology um, course at the time that was run out of the department, um, only one faculty member was not a, a direct member of physiology, and he was an MD doing the respiratory section. So, you know, physiology was in charge of running the uh, course, therefore the curriculum and the discipline of physiology within the College of Medicine. And I was hired to teach the GI physiology section of which I'm not a GI physiologist, but um, I knew a lot about smooth muscle. Um, I did know a lot about metabolic issues and I became a uh, GI guy. And over the course of 40 years of teaching GI physiology, I'm considered an expert in GI physiology. And it guided some of my research as well. So if someone were, if you were just to describe the program then when you first arrived versus what it is now, what's, yeah. how has it evolved? What's changed? Well, the breadth of the department has changed. It's decreased in breadth and uh, areas of focus on research have evolved. Uh, which is great because I have a lot of colleagues that I interface with uh, within the areas of research I have most interest. Um, the other thing about the department is it has grown and it's grown in some very unique ways. Uh, when I got here, uh, there was an undergraduate um, major in exercise sciences. Um, that exercise science major was disbanded and we took on the faculty um, that were doing research. A number of them uh, were excellent um, translational physiologists. And uh, I believe one of them remains with us, Ralph Argosi, is respiratory physiologist. Uh, and in the end, uh, we took on their undergraduate major at that same time. And I think there were maybe 40 students in that major. Um, and now that has developed over the 25, 30 years that uh, that developed uh, to a major of uh, over 2,000 students, where we graduate between 400 and 500 students a year. So that's been a huge change, uh, and it's changed the focus of the department. Over how, that so, how so? Well, how? we were a research-based department focused on 
teaching at the medical school level, minimal teaching, um, maybe a little bit more than some of my colleagues at other universities, but relatively minimal and very focused on the research uh, efforts of the department. Um, and then when we took on that undergraduate major and it began to grow, um, for a variety of reasons it grew, uh, but you know, obviously anybody who thinks about going into medicine or thinks about going into any human related research endeavor, physiology is a very attractive major. So P PT students, a lot of different kinds of uh, pharmacy students, all were taking our major. Um, and we have a lot of teaching faculty now uh, lecturers that don't have research programs and integrating them into the department has been a challenge over time, but that's something we actually are active, oh, have been actively working on for many years, such that um, a lot more of the basic science research faculty are teaching within the undergraduate major, usually at the upper division level um, in courses that can be taught both graduate and undergraduate students. And then also to try to bring in the instructors uh, into research related types of um, environments like seminars and things like that. So they feel that they're current and integrated within the department as well. So, so how closely do you think that parallels your, your peers at other um, R1 institutions? I mean, yeah. are you hearing sort of similar things as far as um, how the physiology departments are evolving at other institutions? Well, I, so I think we're at the cusp of this evolution. Uh, in, in fact, um, the medical schools themselves are taking a lot of the basic science curriculum out of year one and two um, and requiring as prerequisites physiology and immunobiology, a variety of basic science prep type of work and putting it, asking for it to be within the undergraduate curriculum. So there's a real push now for um, having the kinds of programs, maybe not at the level that we have, but programs that are going to be able to provide those sorts of resources to undergraduate students. And um, in fact, we've already begun to see this where um, our summer courses, which we have you know, developed over the years, uh, are, are being requested to be taken by students coming from other colleges. Mm -hmm. uh, during the summer so that they can access physiology courses uh, at our university, but still be in a, a liberal arts environment uh, and getting their degrees in a liberal arts environment. So yeah, I think true. that's an evolution that will be seen across the country and uh, physiology departments may be able to take advantage of that. That's really interesting. And so you've recently been appointed acting chair of right. um, your department. What do you see as your biggest challenges? Well, it's interesting because we have this distribution of, of work, um, we actually have uh, co-directors uh, in the department. One is for the undergraduate major, and she's responsible for how the undergraduate major runs. Uh, I believe you know Claudia Sinescu, who's okay. part of teaching, and that's Claudia's role. And then we have another faculty member, Eric Eggers, who is responsible for the research role, you know, oversight of research. So uh, although I'm acting chair, I'm actually acting uh, in a committee of, with those two who are mm. the knowledge experts in, in those areas. Although, you know, of course I tend towards the research side as well. Um, so, you know, what our goal is, is to consolidate within the college um, our role. And that's probably something we, you know, should be talking about. Um, uh, we going forward are going to have to recruit a new chair and we wanna make sure as a governing committee that the department is operational, fully operational, such that it's attractive to, you know, high level individual who would like to come in and see this as an opportunity. Um, and there's some things that need to be done, including integrating the faculty across such a broad mission. Um, and, uh, you know, I think this committee, interim governing committee, which I'm chairing, is is critical to that because we have the research side uh, fully on board with integrating with the undergraduate teaching side, um, and that probably needs to be done a little bit better than we have in the past. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Um, so looking, kind of taking your experience and looking more broadly, how do you think perceptions of physiology have evolved generally within academia, and particularly at larger R1 institutions? Um, very difficult question, Scott. Um, 
the evolution is that everybody's a physiologist. Um, you know, not trained as one, but you know, everything has to have a physiological context to it, translational, right? Translational. So even people that are working at the, you know, very basic level have to translate that into what, you know, clinical aspect, which in most cases means physiology mm -hmm. uh, or pathophysiology, which we all work on. Now, I, I think this is where the discipline really plays a role. And that is, you know, you can't just think about the human body as a single organ. And many people who consider themselves physiologists or translational people, really what they do is they pick an organ and they try to figure out what's going on and how they can, you know, make things better or modulate organ function. But in the end, and I think the immune system and the interactions of the immune system with other organ systems shows us dramatically how one needs to think about the body as an ent a single entity built up of these different organ systems. And I think that's physiology. And I think, you know, medicine, a lot of medical people who come towards us have a much better appreciation for that. And I think even people like me, who's I'm an imaging person for the most part, um, I bring a lot to the table when I have these discussions because, you know, I am asking questions about holistic types of things as opposed to really dissecting down to the basic, which I've trained in biophysical and basic molecular kinds of questions. Do you think that understanding of sort of integrative physiology has declined within the discipline itself? I mean, you look at APS members and they, I think very many of them see themselves as being specialists, as being cardiovascular researchers and physiologists or uh, renal researchers and physiologists. And so has that specialization sort of um, taken something away from sort of the perception of the discipline? Yeah, um, I don't think so. And uh, as a matter of fact, I, I think on the surface, what you're, you're really talking about is the kind of research. So when we go to experimental biology or APS meeting, you know, we tend to gravitate to the people who are working in our field and that's important, but that doesn't mean that we don't go to other sections and right. see the work of other people. And, and that's the integration I'm talking about. So yeah, I mean, naturally you're going to wanna to get all the information you can about the area of research you're involved in and meet the people that you know, are important to you to get your grants, to you know, give you feedback on the kinds of work you're doing. But in fact, it's the integration between those sections that are really important. And I think we do that all the time. I think that's what those big meetings are, are best for. And, and really, as we develop our new annual meeting, so much of it is about um, I, sort of a really renewed focus on that integrative aspect on yeah. what are what are the um, the sort of big topics that that are cross disciplinary and cross cross sectional in our case. Well, I, I was a program, as you, I think you know, as a program yeah, committee chair for EB for APS for six years, and one of the things that I really pushed were the uh, interdisciplinary. Uh, translational kinds of uh, symposia. Um, they were called cross-sectional at the time. And uh, those are some of the best things that we put on where you had people from multiple sections giving talks on a particular, usually disease related problem um, that brought you know, people across the board into those rooms. And, and that, those were exceptional. I thought those are the best things at the meeting. Yeah, we, I think we're trying to uh, other than take, my work. take that other experience. Other presentation of my work. None. Those, those are the best things right. other than the presentation of my work. Of course, well, and of course, yeah. and that, of course, is we we sort of stipulate at the beginning. Yes. If Ron did it, John, that's yeah. the best thing. And so what do you see as the, um, what do you see as the kind of current opportunities and threats to the discipline itself? And maybe to us, to APS as, a, as um, an organization representing the discipline. Well, I, I think the threats... Um, are related to um, what I would consider the curriculum within the medical college, right? So now we're talking at the medical school level where uh, most colleges um, have gone to organ system and away from disciplinary courses um, so that anybody can teach any section of physiology. And sometimes it's not done as well as it should be. Um, and I think we sort of lose disciplinary control 
of the information that's being put out there. I've seen that. I think we're getting a little better at it. Um, but I think that's that's definitely a threat. Now, um, I think there are a lot of opportunities within that. The first one is the undergraduate level. Um, again, you know, because this is being shifted, I think there's a huge opportunity to uh, really get our foot in the door. And often, you know, we're seeing, we're a college of medicine undergraduate program. Students are really attracted to that. And that's why we have such a large undergraduate program. And I think that would generally be across the board. You, these things could be offered. But even within the medical school, I think, you know, being a discipline director, being able to, you know, really get back into more of an overview of what, what physiology is and really, you know, put the discipline in the curriculum in a strong way is important. And um, I've seen our curriculum, medical school curriculum evolve over time where they understand the need for somebody to oversee physiology and what physiology curriculum is being put into, you know, into the medical school curriculum. Uh, even as it's being limited to a certain extent. You know, if there, if there were, was one thing or um, a few things that, that other institutions could learn from Arizona, what do you think they would be? I mean, I, I, think, I think your program is often held up as a model. Um, uh, I mean, I've heard, I've heard many members um, at other institutions refer to Arizona uh, as a model. So what do, what do you think um, that's sort of the lesson that, that, other institutions could take from the Arizona program? Well, the lessons are being developed. Um, you know, we, we are learning a lot on the fly. Uh, look, it, it's very difficult to uh, balance uh, the research mission and a large teaching mission. Um, if anything that we can contribute is that we are continuing to evolve in that regard. Um, you need to nurture both. and. Uh, one of the things that drives the undergraduate major is tuition dollars. Um, you know, when you have 2,000 students in your major, um, there's a lot of resources coming for that. And that can skew the perception of the department and also where the resources go when a new person needs to be hired or a new course needs to be opened. Um, and maybe you need to be supporting a junior faculty member as well. Uh, you know, which, where do those resources go? Uh, I think it's really important for the research faculty, the tenure track faculty, to have a real say in how that research program runs. Um, if if it turns into a, you know, uniform look, we're we're going to generate as much revenue as we can. Um, well, you know, you can generate a lot more revenue by bringing in more and more students into seats uh, than you can by the small percentage of IDCs that come back to the department. Mm. Um, and so the decision making needs to really take into account what the mission of the department is. And, you know, our mission is to develop knowledge and uh, and pass that on to the students. And without a strong research mission, that knowledge development is left to others. And I don't see that as a positive. That's great. Uh, I think we'll end there. And thank you so much, Ron. Really appreciate your insights, uh, as I always do. And great seeing you. It's great to see you, Scott. And thanks for keeping me involved. Thanks.